plants less than 7.6 plant reproduction. So we've already talked a lot about this um, in our first unit, biodiversity, but now let's use our knowledge of what we understand about plants and apply it to their reproductive systems. Angiosperms, like we know, are seed-producing plants. So that means that they go through pollination. So on the plants, there's typically a um, fruit or sort of flower. Even if you don't see it, there's usually a flower on that plant or a fruit. Um, so the flowers of the fruit on the plant have both male and female parts. The pollen must fertilize the egg in the female part. So all flowers or um, fruits have this sort of pollen that the plant produces um, and it must fertilize the egg in the female part. Then one then so we sort of talk about two sperms. So one sperm fertilizes the egg to form the actual embryo and the other sperm forms an endosperm to nourish that embryo. So it's sort of a two sperm job in order for that embryo to form and to be nourished as well. Then birds, bees, butterflies, things that you think of um, that are typically pollinators are attracted to the fruit or flowers by their sweet nectar. Um, while they, those birds, bees, butterflies feed on the plant's nectar, they actually transfer um, that, they transfer it back to the female part again um, of another plant or their own. So if they transfer it back to the own plant, that's just pollination, that's self-pollination. If they transfer it to another plant, it's actually called cross-pollination, which we'll talk about in a bit. So from that whole pollination process by the um, birds and the bees and the butterflies actually pollinating um, that female part and transferring it back over, that starts the formation of a new fruit or flower, whether it's on the own plant or on another plant. Um, and then after a while, you know, once it grows, um, we call it the floral tube, it will become unattached from the actual plant and fall to the ground. So, like we talked about in our first unit, once that floral tube falls to the ground, so whatever that may be, you can see in this picture, they're dandelions, they've obviously those little pieces are going to fall to the ground once, you know, they blow away. So that would follow the method of wind seed dispersal. But there's also water, so it might land in the water. Um, you know, if it's a fruit specifically, the animal could eat the fruit and then poop it out and then it will start to grow once the animal poops it out after it's been buried in the soil. And another really common one that happens a lot in nature, if it's like a burr, it could hook onto an animal's fur and then once in a while the animal will shake its fur and it'll fall to the ground and then it'll plant in the soil and grow the new plant there. So here is a diagram for the um, angiosperms. So I'm not going to go over it entirely, but you can see we have the ovule. Um, the style and the pistil are two really important parts to our plant um, reproductive systems. And you can see we have the ovary and all sorts of stuff like that. And this is essentially, you don't really need to understand um, this diagram, how it works per se, but understand all these different parts and then what we just talked about for an angiosperm, how it goes through pollination. Okay, so we talked about angiosperms, now we're going to talk about gymnosperms or the naked seeds. So for them, they have cones for their reproductive structures. So they have male and female cones. The male cones or the pollen cones, they only produce pollen grains, so like tiny grains of pollen. The female cones or the seed cones produce the actual ovules. So pollen is released from the male and it drifts to the female where it produces sperm which fertilizes the seed or the female cones. So remember, female cones are the seed cones and they become fertilized by the pollen that is drifted over from the male. Um, then from that process, a zygote will begin to form into the seed's surface. So here's just a quick diagram of that. The way I like to um, picture this is with a pine cone because it actually gives you that rep uh, visual representation of, oh, there is a male cone and a female cone. And it just gives you a clearer picture of what those are. 
Um, so it shows you what the male cone looks like and the female cone and what they look like off of that pine tree. Then it shows you the whole pollination process with the ovule, the pollen grain, and the pollen tube, um, stuff like that. And then it shows you that over time, the zygote will form um, at the sort of surface and then the seed are dispersed to grow into more pine trees. That's just how it works. So like I said at the beginning, we'll come back to the topic, why is cross-pollination so important? So remember, cross-pollination is when the bees sort of mix over, um, they fertilize one plant and then they bring it over to another plant and the, the male and female parts. So cross-pollination is when one plant fertilizes another plant, essentially, and they mix together. So what, why it's important is it because it promotes a high biodiversity because it essentially creates new species and sort of new plants because new plants sort of mated together which will essentially promote a high biodiversity which is something that we've been looking at a lot in this unit and that's it